How's it going, guys? Kyle Matlock here with Selkirk Marine and Raider Boats. Hey, we're here for water test day. So uh, this is the boat that you've seen uh, all over the internet that we had at the Seattle Boat Show. So it's our 280 offshore. We uh, we did a pretty cool color combo. So it's white with uh, black rub rails. We did a black black top of the uh, the V berth there, and then a black roof along with all the anodizing. So I'm gonna take you through a walkthrough of it, and uh, yeah, we'll check it out. See what you guys think. All right, I'll meet you inside. All right, well, now that we're inside the boat, I'm going to kind of show you some of the options it's got in it. So uh, it is a standard in all of our offshores. It's got a welded in diamond plate aft deck. So you can see all the welds, super beautiful. It's got these two big access plates on the back. You guys might wonder what those are for. Those are for the tops of all the fittings to the fuel tank. So if you ever have to access your, uh, your electronic fuel sending unit or any of the fittings for the vent hoses and the fuel fill, they're all into there. We do have a nice, massive fish hold right here. So, you can throw all your fish in there, bleeding out rockfish. We've uh, we fit limits in there before, and so that's mid 30s for six guys. This boat is also outfitted with a transom mount bait tank, so that's pretty cool. It's uh, it's got both these drawers, so these can get wet. So you know you can put your lures in there, spray them off. We put a little lemon joy on them, really get them nice and saucy. You know what I'm saying? Really make them alluring for the fish. The uh, about 40 gallon bait tank down in here. So it's got baffles all the way around the side to make it rounded so that your fish aren't running into a square wall and being dead by the time you get out there. You can see the jet rail down in the corner. So it's got a uh, it's got a drain right out the back here. So you just flip this big valve and it just drains the whole tank within probably a minute and a half, two minutes. Or you can just put it in overflow mode which there's a standpipe in the back of the tank. So that whenever the uh, whenever the tank gets full, then it just keeps recirculating and spraying water in there and then it won't overflow. So it just kind of, you know, seeps out the, the drain pipe there. We did add a cutting board on the side here. So when you're flame, you know, flaying your, your giant salmon that you just caught out on the river, you can just blow all the guts right off the back. You don't have to worry about that. Here's where the batteries are. So we've got a uh, three battery system in here. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see the manifold down there in the corner where uh, the bilges and the diaphragm pump pump into. So that just runs out your one welded through hole in the side of your boat, none of that plastic stuff. Back here in the back, you can see uh, both of our fuel water separators. This here is the wash down. Then you've got your diaphragm pump down there. We used to use a macerator, they're cheaper, they pump water faster, but uh, if you get some fishing line or a lure in there, blows it up, got to replace it. So we bulletproof it by doing that. The standpipe is down there under the, uh, the shear flow pump. That is for your bait tank. So uh, this boat is also equipped just like every other boat with our ACR systems, which is automated charging relay. So that just allows the, uh, you know, the motor battery and then the two house batteries to stay isolated so that if you kill your house batteries, uh, your motor battery isn't dead whenever you go to start your motor up. It also detects which batteries need more of a charge. So whenever you start your boat, it uh, diverts the charge to whichever uh, whichever batteries need it more. Coming up here, you can see that we have full length welded gunnel steps. Those are fantastic. You can see how we do bend it for an inch down over the side. So when you're dragging crab pots down over the side, you're not scuffing up your paint. It's equipped with two downrigger pads. They both have uh, Burnowin Burnwin GM 650s in them. Um, this boat does come with two Scotty 1106s, the uh, downriggers. Uh, they're down in the cuddy. I took them off so they didn't get all grimy when we were running down here uh, from the shop. It does have dual digital 250s, so you can run your mains from the second station or the front helm. Um, this here is for the kicker. You've got your standard Horizon VHF here. Uh, both SMG fours for your Suzuki's. You got your start stop switch here. Um, this here is for trimming your motor separately. Start stop. You've got troll mode. Um, this boat is equipped with a GHC 50 smart pump autopilot system. 
So there's your smart pump right there for your main engines. It's also got a Garmin 1243 back here. Um, so that's the slave unit for the front, uh, the front two screens. We do have dual, uh, dual aft deck lights. So these go red, white, and blue. The white is dimmable. Um, so it's not blinding you in the morning or if you want to run red. It's also got uh, under gunnel lighting. It's kind of hard to see in the daylight, but there is lights under the gunnel. So at night, that's super nice because it lights up the floor, gets you enough light to see what you're doing if you don't want the light in your eyes. Got rod trees on the sides. Uh, up front, it does have a radar. Um, so it's got on the radar arch up front there on the top of the brow. Standard in our offshores now is LVP impact resistant flooring. So that's what you put in a high end home. So it is all free floating in there and then we silicone around the sides. Um, we just started this hatch. So it's got a shock inside of it. Remember, you undo it, it'll stay open. Just like that. You've got a giant in floor storage there. Um, so that'll stay open. It's all carpeted. It is fully sealed, so it is dry storage. Um, so nothing's ever going to get wet inside of there. You've got carpeted storage under both seats here. So that's pretty handy as well. Tons of storage inside of this boat. Coming back here, we started doing a little step on our foot where your feet go. So that's all carpeted as well. Haven't hooked up the wash down hose there as you can see yet. We do have storage under this seat as well. There's your downriggers. Storage under this seat. That's where all the extra components for the boat are. This is something new we started doing. So this is a short cabin to maximize deck space. So on this 280 you've got a little over 11 foot of deck space um, and then you have a half dinette. So this does have a slide on it so you can move your seat to whichever or your table to whichever side you want. Got a uh, 32 inch bench seat on one side and then you have your S5 over here which swivels. This is a bolster seat so you can set it down for sitting at the table and then whenever you want to run you want to stand up. It's not so important for the passengers but for the captain it's pretty nice to be able to stand up and run so it's pretty awesome. You get a better view, uh, you can see better, got a better sight line. It also makes a way better ride but Besides the ride, these S5s are the best riding seats I have ever sat on. So we used to run Mariners in here. Mariners are a great seat. The S5s are just that much better. They are absolutely amazing. So we've got uh, four cabin lights up top. They are red, white, and blue as well, and the white is dimmable. So if I turn it on, rock them off and on, they stay dimmed. And then I've also got red, and I got blue. So I can turn the white on. You can see it growing in intensity, so you can rock it wherever you want it to stop. Up here you've got two Garmin 1243 XSVs. This here is your GHC 50 unit for your Reactor 40 smart, uh, smart pump and your autopilot. Here's your analog fuel gauge, but the Suzuki screens do talk, or the Garmin screens do talk to the motors. So you can input how much fuel you have on board, and then it calculates the exact fuel burn. So these are completely 100% accurate. So that's how you're going to want to use your fuel. This here is just a backup most of the time because your fuel uh, your fuel tank is concaved at the bottom so it might see you uh, have a quarter tank when really you're about an eighth. Um, over here is all your switches. So you've got bilge one and two. So they are on a 24 hour circuit so they will kick on because they have a float if water does get in the bottom of the boat. Um, but you can turn them on automatically there. You've got your nav and anchor lights. You've got uh, the wipers here. So this one turns on just the uh, just the starboard. You flip it down, it turns on port and starboard. If you go to the net switch over, you've got your center wiper. Then there's the cabin lights. You've got your horn, wash down, fish box. Um, and then next to that will be the pump to turn on your bait tank. And then you've also got your back deck lights here and then a couple open accessory ports or if you ever want to add anything else. Here is your digital uh, throttle control. You've got your troll mode. Um, your Suzuki start stop for port and starboard true up and down and your ignition key switch. Uh, down here here's the V-berth. Under the middle you do have a fully flushable marine head so instead of doing a stand-up head that way you still get your toilet system uh, without taking up any extra space. So you can also see under here you can see that big box and then that carpeted hose that runs out the side of the bow. 
that is that is the anchor box right there so it's fully carpeted so it's still nice and comfy in there um, but that is your anchor box for all your road and all your chain and all that good stuff um, and then it drains right out there and right outside of the bow so there's a nice Lumar hatch up top uh, that you can see there along with both the doors to get into your anchor box and then that middle spot that's uh, that's fixed that's where your Lumar windless winch will go so also right up here on the dash you can see you got a couple vents port and starboard that's for your heater so it is a diesel planar, planar heater in the floor you've got a five gallon fuel tank it is 13,000 BTU so it gets very hot and this here is your control module so you can see I'll press it so now it's starting up keep me warm when we get out on the river there and this here's your fuel gauge for your diesel tank so I think that's about it guys we're gonna head out and we're gonna do our break in. So we're gonna run it through according to the manual to break the engines in. I'm gonna test all of the systems, including all the pumps, make sure none of the hoses leak, do all that stuff. So if you ever buy a boat from us, you'll get it with three to five hours on it and everything will be ready to go fishing. Right on guys, well, make sure and like and subscribe our video. We'll see you on the next one. Later guys.